Please repeat after me. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Burnout. It is so real. In the U.S. right now, people are retiring at record rates. A new Gallup study reported that one in every four people feels burned out very often or always when at work. And it's hard not to feel burned out in other areas. What must it feel like for someone who has been working for the progress of civil rights all their life, only to have more and more states pass legislation targeted at black voter suppression? Sometimes it feels like the good we do doesn't really make a difference. And sometimes we are too exhausted even to try. The wisdom of today's scripture is for those of us who just feel so tired. But before we dive into the scripture, I want to tell you about the story of a queen of Israel who is not mentioned in the biblical canon. Even though she was a woman ruling in a patriarchal culture, she was known as a legendarily good queen. Her name was Salome, and she ruled in Israel during the second century BCE, after the Israelites had thrown off the yoke of the Greeks, but before they would be conquered by the Romans. She was a great ruler. She was known for her mercy. She stopped several genocides from taking place in her homeland. But this, this is the part I want you to remember. During her reign, there is a legend that it only rained on the Sabbath. And while this piece of information may seem strange or even insignificant, I promise you it is not. Acknowledgement, it really is an acknowledgement of the importance of rest. By saying that it only rained on the Sabbath, the rabbis who wrote about this legend were saying that the poor, unskilled laborers who would have tilled the fields were able to collect all of their wages during the week. And yet the landowners could not force them to work on Saturdays because it was raining. They would get their much needed rest on the Sabbath in accordance with the law. And not only is this in accordance with the law, not only is rest crucial to our success as humans, but something about true rest allows us to become closer with God and each other in this deep inner stillness. And so continuously in scripture, we get an image of a God who entreats people to stop and to rest and to be still. Our psalm today illustrates this really well. Oh God, you are my shepherd. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You revive my soul. This image of God as a shepherd is one that Jesus and the gospels pick up often when Jesus expresses deep care for people. In our gospel story today, Jesus has compassion for the crowd because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He cares for them. And even before that, we get an instance of Jesus being a shepherd to the disciples. We can remember the gospel from two weeks ago. Jesus sends his disciples out to heal the sick, telling them to move from town to town, shaking the dust off their feet when they aren't accepted. This is the triumphant return of the disciples to Jesus. We're not really sure how long it's been since they split off, but they're likely glad to see each other again. They're reunited. And the disciples are telling Jesus all that they have done. Some of them are probably boasting. Others are trying to prove their worth in the eyes of their teacher. They want to make sure Jesus knows that they have done enough, that they have earned their spot as a disciple. Jesus listens. And the only response we see in the gospel is this. He says, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves, and rest a while. And this kind of response is what makes Jesus a truly good shepherd. He doesn't want to belittle their accomplishments. 
He knows the work that they are doing is important. He's the one who sent them out to do it. But he also knows that they are missing the point. It is not about how much they have done. It is not about how much you or I do. It seems like what Jesus wants for us is not that feeling we so often get where we are scraping the bottom of the barrel on the edge of burning out. Jesus wants us to rest, to be still, to be in deep relationship with God and each other, because only from that place of stillness can we do the sustained work of bringing about God's reign. Only from that place of stillness can we know that we are enough, that our mission is not about us and our accomplishments, but solely about showing each other the love that we have first been shown by God. Jesus knew the burdens of his own people. Many of those burdens are ones that we share today. I don't want you to walk away thinking I've been telling you not to go out and do the work that Jesus challenges us to do. But I do want all of us to realize the value of something that I often forget in the midst of the busyness of my own life. The value of the inner stillness that comes from this true rest. It is rest in God that sustains our advocacy for LGBTQIA plus people. It is rest in God that sustains our marching for police reform and voting rights for all. It is rest in God that sustains our giving to the church and to those less fortunate than us. The free time we get is often used to distract ourselves, but the rest and stillness God invites us into is different. It may look like time and silence alone. It may look like a really good conversation with a loved one. It may look like hiking in God's beautiful creation. It may look like church. Whatever it does look like for you, I encourage you to follow Jesus into that place of rest and stillness. And I encourage you to give other people in your lives the grace to have the same time for that rest. This rest which Jesus invites us into is what sustains our work, draws us close to God, and revives our soul. Please repeat with me one more time these words. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Amen.